Hey, comma, getting ready for the video, question mark? So I'm exclamation mark. How about you, question mark? I am too, period. Why are we talking so weird, question mark? Well, Corey, comma, let's find out, exclamation mark, colon, right parentheses. <laughs> Hi all, welcome back to another Tech Connect. We are back from California. Today we are looking at Windows 11 dictation and we're gonna quickly touch on Windows 11 voice control. Luke, speak it away. That's right, Corey, Backstreet's back, all right. And we are glad to be here back in the office to bring to you a dictation video. Now, not to blow our own horns, Corey, but we do have a very popular dictation video out there already, but that one covers Windows 10. So we decided it was about time to jump into Windows 11 and see what it has to offer for dictation. To start off with here, we're gonna go ahead and open Notepad. And we're going to take a look at system-wide dictation that's built into Windows 11. What does system-wide dictation do? Well, basically, any text field in the computer we can dictate into using a shortcut. Corey, what is the shortcut that we need to use? The shortcut that we use for Windows dictation yes. is Control-Alt-Windows exclamation point grave tilde enter. <laughs> Am I right? Um, well, you, you're very close, Carl. Oh, okay. Um, I prefer to do it the shorter way with Windows H, but you oh. know, whatever works for you. No, uh, you are the best trainer ever. <laughs> so, uh, quick Windows H, hold down the Windows key, tap the H, will bring up the speech recognition panel, and you'll hear a little noise, and that means you can start to dictate. Let's give it a try here. I hope that this works, comma, otherwise I will look really stupid right now, exclamation mark. All right, let's see what we got. Hope that this works, comma, otherwise, comma, I will look really stupid right now, exclamation mark. Awesome. So I see a bit of a problem here. Yes. It worked. It did. Yeah. But yeah. you still look stupid, question mark? That's scandalous. If anybody else <laughs> thinks that I look stupid, please put it in the comments. <laughs> no, you don't want that. Yeah. You just opened a can of worms Good there. point. You know what? Don't bother. Don't bother. <laughs> um, so we saw that that works pretty well. Now, uh, the speech recognition control panel pops up whenever we do our shortcut. And there is a cog wheel on the left, which is to open our settings. Let's take a quick look in there. And we will see a new aspect to Windows 11 dictation. That is automatic punctuation. I have this enabled at the moment. It's something which I think you have to enable um, yourself if you want it. But what this will do is solve a uh, very long standing problem with dictation in that people talk and they do not add punctuation. And what comes out is garbled nonsense, Corey. I uh, know that I've received that from you a number of times. Yeah, absolutely. Exclamation point. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it is a nice feature to have that automatically put in there. We're going to test how well it works in just a second. We also have a voice typing launcher. If you enable this anytime you are in an edit field it will automatically launch the dictation and that is uh, really handy for those who just know they are going to be dictating all the time so let's test the automatic punctuation we're going to go ahead and dictate again and this time i will not say any punctuation we're going to see if the computer puts it in automatically so here we go if this doesn't work it is because of bill gates so if you are having problems with it Please write to Bill Gates. His email address is bill.gates at microsoft.com. Thanks so much for watching. All right, let's see what we got in here. Well, we got some periods. Yeah, we got a comma in there. Uh, yeah, everything looks great, including the email address. So as far as I can tell, we're onto a winner and you don't need to write to Bill Gates. Why don't you go ahead though and write to him and tell him how awesome Tech Connect Live is. <laughs> This uh, dictation stuff is pretty cool, now. It's doing a good job. I'm quite uh, surprised. Yeah, me too. Um, I, I kind of wondering though, like how far away from the microphone does it work, you know? Well, wouldn't you just be using it right by your computer? Uh, for the most part. But imagine the scenario though. You're an important businessman. Yes, I am an you, important businessman. I know you don't need to do business. You don't need to imagine that part, obviously. <laughs> That's very true. Uh, but you, you're angry, okay, and you're dictating an, an irate memo, and of Ooh. course, you know you don't want to sit down because you've got a lot of pent up energy. So, oh, I bet you I have a big. Do I have a big office? Massive as office. A, as an important man. Yeah, you're, you're at the other end of the office, and it needs to pick you up. Well. All right, all right, let's check this out. I'll, I all will right. test it out. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna enable dictation. Can you hear me now? Yeah, looking great. Okay. Go, go a right. bit further. Let me go. Let me go to the door here. Let's try this. Can you hear me now, Corey? I can still hear you. You're gonna have to keep on going, man. Oh, I'm gonna have to go outside the door Fire. here. All okay, right, Corey, on. go further. Keep on going. Can you hear me now? Finally, some peace and quiet in here. 
you guys hear something? Anyway, let's get on with our dictation video. So as well as system-wide dictation that we looked at previously in the last segment, we also have dictation in Microsoft Office. So if you are the proud owner of Microsoft Office, you have access to another form of dictation, which I assume is using the same speech engine. Um, and that would be by pressing Alt and the Grav accent, a bit of a weird key that's found underneath Escape on the left side of the keyboard. So let's try and dictate our email using this dictation. I'll do an Alt Grav bill.gates at microsoft.com and we can see that we managed to dictate our email address there which is kind of neat and it works perfectly now this doesn't always work it kind of depends on the email address so you might have to play around and see whether it works well for you let's go down to the subject field thanks for the dictation bill exclamation mark we managed to successfully uh, dictate our subject in there and again, worked really well, so that's looking good. Let's tab to the actual body of the email and we'll just dictate the email itself. This is working really well, exclamation mark. And we, go, and we got our dictation in there and things are looking really good. So you can see dictation in Microsoft Office works as well as a system-wide dictation and is just another useful tool in our toolbox. Hey, let me in. I think I need to get out of here, it's getting a bit noisy. I wonder whether Bill Gates has seen our YouTube channel, because if he has, then presumably he knows what a great personality I am and how good I am with technology, and I think he would give me a very high paid job at Microsoft. Hmm. Let's dictate him an email here and we'll see what he's got for me. Dear Mr. Gates, comma, I'm sure you have seen our wonderful Tech Connect YouTube channel, period. As such, comma, I know that you know what a great presenter I am. Steve Jobs forever. Ugh, foiled again. You guys missed the first couple takes where I didn't tell Luke he did a great job. So I wanted to make sure, Luke, mm. great, very good, terrific job. Corey, Corey, it was a fantastic job. Mm, yes. Fantastic. <laughs> fantastic. Yes. So, so far we've taken a look at dictation without a screen reader, but I know a lot of individuals watching our channel mm. use a screen reader. So how does dictation work when you have a screen reader? Corey, I feel like this is the moment that we've all been waiting for. I know I've been waiting for mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. Let's all do my it. life. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> In this demonstration, we're using JAWS, but it really doesn't matter which screen reader you have going. The keyboard command to use dictation, as we, uh, as Luke showed in the beginning, was Windows H. That's gonna continue. So I have a uh, Word document open here. I'm gonna hit Windows H, and let's see what we get. Windows H. Hello, I am testing this out with a screen reader, period. I wonder what's going to display on the screen. Windows H. So this is the first issue we run into. Mm. Dictation worked, at least I assume it worked. Well, but we I have no way of knowing yet. Exactly, yeah. I don't get any, any uh, speech feedback that anything was put in. So what I need to do now is use our normal text navigation keys just to review what text has been put Call in what this document. What are those text navigation keys? Well, it depends how you want to navigate. Mm. <laughs> you want to do line, word, let's character. Go line. Let's go by line. All right, we're gonna use up and down All arrow right. here. So let's take a look at what was put in. Papa post. Papa post. Huh. So we're getting a weird issue when we use dictation and it didn't happen, but it happened and then didn't happen and now it's happening again. Mm -hmm. When I try to arrow, I'm getting this pop-up post. I don't know if it's specific to just this computer or if it's a problem with Windows 11 dictation and a screen reader. But if we alt tab away and bring focus Option. back in, Document one now we should be able to use our text navigation. Hello, I'm testing this out with a screen reader. Hmm. I wonder what's going to display on the screen. Perfect, yeah. so it did a very good job. Now my screen reader is not set to speak um, punctuation automatically, so I'd have to review it word by word to go in and take a look at punctuation. But this is one of the sort of downfalls of using Windows dictation with a screen reader is that you don't get automatic feedback of what you've typed in. Right, so for that, maybe uh, Dragon and JSA is still the best solution. Absolutely. <laughs> Must be lunchtime. It is. I'm oh, getting nice. my very healthy lunch yeah. out of the freezer. Looks like it, yeah. Ice cream. 
What do you think about this? Uh, you hear about this voice control in Windows 11 now? I've heard it's getting pretty good. Oh, I know they're yeah. adding voice control in everything. That's crazy. Yes, yeah, everywhere. Yeah. I want. There's got to be something in this kitchen that I can control you by reckon? my voice. Huh. Uh, let me give this a shot. Right, Pick up my lunch. What? What's happening? Yes, this is working. <laughs> no. Move to microwave. No, Coy, no, huh? I am controlling you, this is awesome. <laughs> Open microwave door. Place my healthy lunch of ice cream in microwave. <laughs> yes, this is working. Close microwave door. <laughs> and microwave for 76 days. No! So thankfully, Corby has given me back control of my body just in time for me to show you guys all about voice access in Windows 11. This is quite exciting. It's a new feature which makes voice control a lot easier. Now, we already looked at dictation, but voice control is a little different. It basically allows us to, unbelievably, control the computer with our voice. Those of you who are very keen viewers and have seen our previous video, video on Windows 10 voice control, that wasn't the greatest because you had to basically build up a voice program profile in order for it to understand you well and it took a long time and it wasn't accessible and yada 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 was not the greatest but however voice access in Windows 11 is actually online based and that means we don't have to do any of that stuff for it to work properly so how do we get it going well I suggest hit the Windows key type in voice access press enter so it really is the best way of doing it. <laughs> I mean, it definitely <laughs> works. And that will start voice access. Now, if it's your first time, you can do some training. The training is not training the computer the sound of your voice. It's actually training you how to use voice access. Ooh, but of they course, flipped it on they us. flipped it, yeah. yeah. But of course, being the professional that I am, I don't need any of that junk. So I'm just going to dive straight in here. And uh, I will just want to show you a few of the little things that it can do. What could go wrong? What could go wrong, apart from everything? <laughs> so uh, let's start. Now, I just wanted to do a little light overview here. Nothing too major. We'll probably do a separate video on this at some point. But there's a few ways that we can use voice control. We can do uh, specific voice commands for the program that we are using. We can do system-wide voice commands. And we can also di do dictation. And we can also simulate pressing the keyboard just by saying the word press and then whatever keys we want to press. So there's a lot of ways that you can go about doing things. Let's start off here. I'm going to go ahead and open Word. I need to wake up voice access. So I'm going to say a voice command to do that. Voice access, wake up. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try again. Voice access, wake up. Open Word. Press enter. Hello, comma. As you can see here, I am able to control the computer as well as dictate. This is really kind of cool. Select as you can see here. Press Control X. Save. Delete. This is awesome. Hello, are you listening? Click save. Three. Press Alt F4. So I've got a couple questions for you, Luke. Go for it. After listening, so I think I figured out what you did. Yes. You obviously opened up Word, dictated yep. some text. Indeed. Then you selected a, a, a specific group of text, yes. a couple words. Very good. Control X, for those who don't know, is cut. Yep. So then you did a cut. Indeed. Then you said save mm. and went into the save dialog it box. It did. Um, there and then when you said delete, yep. I'm remembering all your steps, that, that deleted whatever was in for the file name field. Yes. You gave it its own file name. Yes. Then you said click save. Yes. Then the one thing I didn't uh, know though is you said three. Now mm. I'm guessing, we'll skip that for just a moment. Sure. But then you said press Alt F4. So for those that use keyboard commands, we know that closes the program. Yeah. I'm guessing that three though, as we step back to that, there must have been some uh, quadrants or or pieces of the screen that were labeled with text and you are numbered and you saying three kind of highlighted a specific or chose a specific option. Is that what would happen? Yeah. So first of all, Corey, uh, congratulations for getting the word quadrants into there. Um, you like that's that? a great move. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah. So basically, this is the problem with voice control for people with vision loss. And uh, we'll get into this more in our proper video. But unfortunately, some of the things that we need to do are unavoidably visual. And that number three was one of those things. 
this. I said click save, but there were multiple instances of the word save in the window, and so I then had to tell it which instance of the word save I wanted it to click okay. on. Yeah. So this is definitely a downside, and in our full produce video on a voice control, we will definitely be talking about that. But uh, every other step there, Corey, you absolutely nailed it. I wonder, and, and I'm, this is just coming back to using Dragon Dictate uh, Dictation with JSay. I wonder if saying click save button would have been able to know that, okay, I'm not looking for a specific word save, but the, the one I'm actually looking for is the save mm. button. I don't know, but t stay tuned to our uh, more in-depth video and we'll answer that question. Hey. Windows 11 definitely has some great dictation features and it is definitely better than Windows 10. Mm. But, you know, we, we, so we saw some ways that we can dictate throughout the operating system, some office specific dictation, and then the ability to control the computer with voice access. But I think, you know, dictation is not always the first choice. Yeah. Um, I think that uh, if you've got the ability to become a non-visual touch typist or learn that keyboard, um, even though the dictation and that voice access is pretty good, there's going to be times where you need to use the keyboard or there's times where using the keyboard is actually faster. So again, if you've got the ability to use the keyboard, I think it's a skill that you definitely want to, to learn. Yep, I 100% agree. Keyboarding is still essential, so uh, definitely take some time to learn the keyboard, but the dictation can be useful, you know, if you just want to rest your hands or if you don't have access to the keyboard, whatever that might be. And uh, just like anything on the computer or anything in life, really, um, you know, practice makes perfect with dictation. So it's not just something that you can pick up and be great at straight away. It really takes a different frame of mind to be able to speak as if you're writing. I think that's the two biggest things. A lot of times people, when they ask us, hey, I want to dictate to my computer, they tend to think it's sit down and be like, make a, uh, do a, create an email, send it to Bill, ask Bill how he's doing, go ahead and send it. Yeah, like exactly. it's not It's not really that um, uh, informal. There no. are things you need to, re to remember what those steps are. Exactly. Yeah. Sometimes you need to say specific things. And yeah, you're right. So it is a skill. To, there's to, certain, to up. certain ways you have to say things and uh, you know that takes a bit of practice just to get used to. But uh, definitely, you know, if you play around with it, you can get pretty good and before long you'll be sending emails to Bill Gates like nobody's business. So uh, <laughs> definitely worth uh, taking a look at. And why don't you at home, why don't you try dictation? I mean, why not? If you have a Windows computer and you're running Windows 11, then you can do all of the stuff that we have done in this video and we would love for you to put down in the comments there um, dictate into the comments a tongue twister your favorite tongue twister may I suggest yeah, what's Peter yours? Piper picked a peck of pickled peppercorn mm. all right so uh, dictation let's let's put it through its paces and see how well it does try and dictate that in the comments and we don't want you to do any correction we want to see the reality of the situation so let's see what we get and please make sure to subscribe to our channel and like the video. It really does help and we would super appreciate it. And Exclamation of course, point. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and of course, you can get in touch with us in three different ways. Email techconnect at vision-forward.org. Contact us by the telephone. Remember those things? 414-615-0103. And we have a website. It is vision-forward.org. We look forward to seeing what you can put into the comments. And we also look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now. Do you think you can hear me from far away? No. <laughs> <laughs>